first, I wanted to just make sure, you know, we get a little bit more insight as to who you are and, you know, what you represent. So I know you're not going to mention the name, but what do you currently do? So I am a lead audit manager over our, what they say, information and cybersecurity team. So what I do, I audit our cybersecurity department or, or, and tools and anything cybersecurity, I audit it to ensure that they have the controls in place that they need. Um, they have the policies in place. Uh, if tools that they're using, the tools are set up securely. Uh, so just pretty much any and everything. Their processes, like when I, I just mentioned the op offensive security team, you know, looking at that, they're kind of doing like pen testing, but they're pretty much internal hackers, you know, so we had to look at their process and dealing with their bug bounty, them doing research and finding potential vulnerabilities. So, you know, it's just anything out there I look at network boundary defenses, network tools, um, any security, uh, I want to say different the security projects that may be coming up, looking at that aspect of it. I've also looked at any bribery and, um, <laughs> and the ABC, any bribery and what is the C for? AML. <laughs> yeah, I looked at that before. Um, Anti-money so, laundering for y'all. Yep, yep. So just ensuring that, you know, certain things are in place, applications working where they're supposed to, just all of, I don't just do all IT now, it's just cybersecurity. So that's my focus. Prior to that, I was in cybersecurity risks. This is when I was at Edward Jones at that time. And um, so security risk management and was looking at our vendors, ensuring that their security posture was up to par. And just, you know, privacy, ensuring that data is secure, looking at the privacy laws. And so it just, cybersecurity, risk, compliance, audit, just pretty much all of that. And I don't want to bore people with everything that I'm doing. I am a adjunct professor for Maryville University and Harris Stowe State University here in St. Louis. And I teach the SIM. One of my classes is SIM course, which is cybersecurity incident event and event management, where we talk, where I go over Splunk and the other class is information security introduction class. And then MIS, like system analysis and design. And then there was the Python class. What do you I do have with your other five days off in the week? Man, I'm telling you, so I'm so happy I don't have as many classes this time as I had last time. Because I really didn't have time. Um, so I do work out. So after I, like after my classes, I'll go teach, I'll go work out. And then um, the next day, like say was, that was like Monday, that Tuesday, I'm like tired. Luckily, we have to go in the office only three days a week. So that one Tuesday, I can sleep in a little bit longer. But um, I do be exhausted sometimes. So over the weekend, yeah, I may travel. I've gone to Chicago, it's like four hours. So I've gone to Chicago quite often. But uh, the summertime, I'm outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, yes, for sure. Summertime, <laughs> step out, let's go. Yes. Let's go. Well, I used to live in Harlem. Oh, and, okay. Um, yeah, and I remember for well summer or winter, but definitely when the weather is good. Yes, you had to get out. The amount of time in a day, I'm I was inside the apartment, and awake was probably thirty minutes, and then that was just a shower, and wow. I, I was out. Like yeah. as soon as I woke up, let's go. Ain't, ain't nothing yeah. going on here. Hit the streets, let's go. So yeah, I know that, but that's that's the feeling I get with summer. Um, yeah. it, you know, it's time to get out there and make things happen. Yes. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask you a kind of more of a elaborate uh, version of this question, but I just want to get straight to the point. You know, someone will hear your history and, you know, where you are and what you're doing. And if, you know, if they have any understanding of these terms, they're going to just be, yo, yo, she's doing it. Right. So what advice would you have to that person for the first time listening to this or watching this and they're saying to themselves, 
Damn, how do I go from to there? Okay. Well, what the way I started out, of course, I was a information, well, business information security. I mean, business information systems major at Tennessee State. So that's where I started. So from there, I started working at Boeing and I was a developer. I worked on PeopleSoft, HR, and financial systems. So I, I have the programming background. And then I got tired of that because a person like me, I get bored easy. So then I moved into the information audit, well, IT audit space. And that's how I started learning more about all of IT. Where, um, cause you know, if you're in a developer, you're just in that one little silo. And uh, like I said, I got bored. So me learning about all these different areas within IT under IT audit, I was able to figure out, I want to move into cybersecurity because I also knew money was there, but you can't, just can't let money lead you the entire way, but you have to have some interest. So what I ended up doing, I started going, taking classes at the local university, which is St. Louis University. They have a cybersecurity certificate program. So that's what I ended up doing. And then, um, and then from there, I had a, enrolled again to work on a second master's, but within cybersecurity. And my professor was the one that got me in to Edward Jones and started working as a senior security analyst. And so one way I got in network, like networking. Of course, I had a background in IT. I know people are trying to get in an industry without any background. So yes, you do need to study. And like with the students that I have in my intro to cybersecurity class, we're going over the Security Plus certification. So the CompTIA Security Plus. That will give you a background to pretty much everything within cybersecurity. So where you can kind of figure out this is the area I want to work in. And um, I'm not going to say it does everything because it's not extremely tech. I'm not going to say it's not technical. It has some technical a spin, but it's not as technical as say, as someone who's trying to be a pen tester. One thing I would say for those that are listening that are, you know, lacking the, the experience, right? Um, the so-called experience, you know, those, those certifications, especially those comp TIA certifications, that's mm -hmm. what they do. The, the A plus is like the encyclopedia of tech, everything from routers to satellites, right? Yep. And then your net plus is like, you know, it's introductory understanding of concepts and networking. Um, and so, yes, there's a lot of reading. However, in my in my past, uh, you know, exams, I found a lot of I found 100 percent success, excuse me, with the certification exams, uh, because a lot of it was I did these little things on the side, like, you know, uh, Put Linux on a computer, just random mm -hmm. stuff. And that was mm -hmm. before going into class. But if you do those things, that's where you get some of that quote experience or at least yep. a framework or understanding so that when they do bring to you the enterprise version and say, hey, how much do you know about this? You can parlay and say, well, you know, I did something like this on, on VirtualBox. So, you know, this ESXi for VMware, I get it. It's just like, you know, a bigger Mac mm -hmm. version. Yep. Yes, definitely. Yes, people do need to play with the tools. And um, I mean, you could download them, like you said, at home, not at work. And make sure you're using a virtual box because sometimes like um, one of my classes, it was a certified ethical hacking class. So, you know, we had like malware and stuff. And of course you don't want that on your computer. So mm -hmm. put it on a virtual box. And another thing I would definitely say, in it, look at some of these, although you have to be really careful with some of these boot camps. Um, some of these boot camps, there are some that are good or um, organizations that provide apprenticeships. So I'm on a board of Cyber Up here in St. Louis, and mm -hmm. I know they, they do. They've had had classes in Charlotte, um, I know in Denver, but, uh, and then of course online. And what they're doing, they're teaching people how to, you know, they're teaching to the, to the Security Plus. But 
in addition, once the people are completed with that class, they pass, they um, they give them apprenticeships to different organizations such as um, PwC, Centene, so people are able to gain that experience. So if you're able to find apprenticeship programs like that, that also helps because there is a one girl, she, well, woman, <laughs> she transitioned from healthcare into cybersecurity using CyberUp, through CyberUp. And now, you know, she's doing a lot of work within cyber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's up with that? So I'm seeing a lot of, get me out of healthcare. I want to get into <laughs> tech, you know? And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I have to, yeah. Uh, well, you know, so one, I used to want to be in that area. They don't pay as well. Mm. Then um, as far as like cybersecurity, they don't put a lot of money towards cyber because, you know, most of the stuff is, you know, for patient care and, um, of course, some of the newer technologies. But I I have a friend, he's a doctor. He told me, because I used to want to be a doctor. He's like, you made the right decision. So, so it's kind of like you have long hours. Then you have people who, administration, who don't pay attention, who, who may not have, like, the best interest at heart, um, or they talk to you incorrectly I, I had to tell him before i've never been spoken like disrespected at work ever and um and of course you've had i've had people say certain things you know be smart alec or do some underhanded stuff but it has never been where i was totally disrespected in my face um and that like i said long hours is people so healthcare. i mean it's a really good field it's a field for helping people but now that I think about it, and I had a, another friend in administration, she just said it's, it's toxic. I mean, hopefully everywhere isn't, but I don't know. The I was just I'm about to say, in. that sounds, uh, the one word I was thinking when you said that was toxic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's one thing, you know, behind the back and all that, but you know, to my face, you know, yeah. we're about to have a, we're about to have a moment. You know, yeah. like, a, like a boondocks moment for real. Yeah, because <laughs> so I, he's um the guy, the doctor. He's he talks about. He wrote a book actually, and he discussed how within when he was doing his residency, how they they because he's a surgeon and the white surgeons that he was under, they basically was trying to tell him you don't know this type of stuff, you can't do this because you're black kind of stuff. You know, so it was. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I'm happy I didn't do it because I, that wouldn't have been good for me. I'm 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 from right outside of Detroit, so you're that wouldn't be, have been good. You're for supposed me. To, you're supposed to be cashing checks, not cases. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you know. know? Yeah, I no, I, I, I hear you because, yeah, there, there, you know, the, that sounds like a whole day of trigger warnings, you know, yeah. just like. Yeah. you know be on the edge so yeah you know so i see that there's like this like trek from healthcare into tech and people mm -hmm. are trying to like you know uh, figure out how to get how to get uh to the other side so to speak um so in terms of helping people out that's a, kind of a good segue i just have ha i did have this question excuse me why are you passionate about helping people switch into tech well one there's money there two especially people of color we just over the years you know just looking at the how how things were with for our people you know we tend not to make as much money as we can um or it can change people's lives if they do it correctly and that's one reason why i'm passionate about it's because people should we all should be, we, everyone could be middle class at least. <laughs> or, um, you know, just making money, you know, not just, uh, I mean, that, that's just bad. I'm, it's hard for me to, to relate what that's I'm not, No, to say. That's, that's, that's not bad at all. Right now, you know, it's a game of offense. You got to run up the yeah. score. Eggs over here, I don't know about over there, but over here, I went to uh, <laughs> Publix and I said, do I need to, you know, fill out an application for some eggs? Like, yo, what is this? It's like, why is there four yeah. numbers there? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's crazy because inflation is here. I mean, this is just 
what I've learned in school anyway, it happened because of supply and demand. I know a lot of people say, oh, the president did this. No, that's not how inflation works. But, um, and if they want to be technical, I mean, as far as the politics playing into it, you happen to have, it's kind of started during the pandemic when one, when tariffs are placed on China. I will definitely say that because the supply started dwindling. When supply dwindles, demand goes up and prices go up. That is the basic equation for um, inflation. But um, with that, when inflation goes, when there's inflation, people have to be able to live. And if you're not able, you don't have the income, you're not bringing in enough money doing certain jobs, then well, you know, you're on, it's not livable. You aren't in like livable conditions. And I kind of see us reverting back. And as far as us black people reverting back to a time when people really weren't making much money. And of course, with that, crime is going to go up. You know, they have all these different social factors that pop into place. And in order to alleviate that, if people were to actually get into tech, I mean, it's not hard because a lot of people try to make it seem like it's hard. No, it's not. Or they say, I'm not computer literate. You're able to type on a computer. You're using your phone every day. That's computers. So if you're able to do that, you're able to give somebody directions to a place, you're, that's a form of programming because you're telling a computer what to do. That's exactly the same thing. Although you're writing it out, they have natural, natural coding, natural coding languages now. So it's not as technical as Java or C++ or, you know, so if they're able to get into tech, they're able to better their family. They can possibly start increasing generational wealth and it, it can help our people on an economic and social level. And that's why I, I have that passion to bring more people in. I don't want people to live like how they were during a crack era when I was growing up. Uh, where can people find you online? Is there anything that you want to bring uh, attention or awareness to? Um, well, I do have a business Instagram page, and that's just pretty much my name, Renita Rhodes, and that's R-H-O-D-E-S. As far as LinkedIn, it's the same thing, Renita Rhodes. Um, as far as the, I can't remember the first part of the LinkedIn URL, I think it's linkedin.com slash LN slash Renita Rhodes. So that's where you can find me. I, I don't use my Twitter. <laughs> I should. Oh, but. yeah. <laughs> well, oh, I, I'll just I'll just not go into Twitter for now. But um, if you're listening to this on a podcast, uh, I'll include uh, contact information, uh, the business IG and LinkedIn in the notes. And then if you're watching this, you're going to see it's going to be on the screen. So, um, so, but yeah, so thank you for stopping by and we should do this again. Okay. That'll be good. I'm so it's, I enjoy intellectual conversations. I really do. And this was great to have. Thank you. Same here. Same here as well. Uh, so take care. And until next time, 